Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Alhamdulillahirabbil alamin wassalatu wassalamu ala rasulillah sayidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajmain. Subhanaka la ilma lana illa ma 'allamtana innaka antal alimul hakim wa la hawla wa la quwwata illa billahi al-'aliyyil 'azim. Rabbi shrah li sadri wa yassir li amri wahlul 'uqdatam min lisani yafqahu qawli. Alhamdulillah. Welcome to the Baki Quranic Language Course. This course, inshallah, will show you how the grammar and topology of Quranic Arabic language functions. And inshallah, after this course, after you watch all the 11 videos, which each video will not last more than 20 minutes, you should be able to take advantage of the Quranic apps and start understanding the Quran huh, from its original text. And inshallah, you'll be able to read it as if you were reading another book. The Baki course is actually a cooperation between Baki Resources and College of Hikmah, whose president is the Professor Dato Dr. Sid Fadil. Uh, is also the, the chairman of the Board of Directors of University of Science Islam Malaysia, USM. Baki Resources and Dato Hikmah, College of Hikmah work together to promote uh, this uh, methodology so that, inshallah, Muslims can start understand the Quran from its original text. Uh, this is myself, I'm not a, I don't have a background for religious uh, teaching or religious, uh, religious study. I'm just a normal person in layman. Uh, uh, I used to be in the corporate field before this and also now I lecture part-time at University of Kuala Lumpur. And I am very interested to understand uh, the Quran, so I uh, enrolled in a 10-month course before this. And in 2015, I signed up uh, as a live member uh, as of the, uh, what you call, Arabic startup program based in Ontario, Canada, where I learned uh, about the Arabic grammar uh, and uh, morphology. And alhamdulillah, I take advantage of that knowledge to actually draw out uh, a simpler and a comprehensive way of explaining how Quranic grammar and morphology works so that uh, the normal layman will be able to understand the, 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 the system and inshallah be able to start understand the Quran from its original text after attending this course. Okay? Allah says in the Quran, A'udhu Billahi Minash Shaitanir Rajeem وَلَكَدْ يَسْرَنَ الْقُرْآنَ الْذِكْرِ فَهَلْ مِنْ مُتَّقِرِ And we have certainly made the Qur'an easy for remembrance, easy for learning, easy for understanding. So that is there any who will remember? So that's God's promise that Qur'an is easy to learn. Uh, how is easy to remember? It's not easy to learn, it's easy to understand. And Allah repeated it, uh, repeats it four times in Surah al kama as you can see there. And the objective of the course is actually to show you how Arabic grammar or Quranic grammar and morphology functions. So much so that you'll be able to start to understand uh, how words are related to each other in the sentence and start to understand uh, most of the ayats and the, the ayats in the Holy Quran. Like, uh, now why in the Quranic language? First is that you can uh, upgrade or enhance the quality of your ibadah. When you do your, perform your prayers or you read the Quran or you supplicate your dua, when you understand the words, word per word and how those are related, then inshallah you, you, you will be more internalized in yourself and you'll be able to appreciate what is being uttered and the, what God says to you. And inshallah will, will improve uh, the quality of the ibadah. And to motivate oneself to read the Quran habitually. Meaning, uh, if you understand what you are reading, inshallah, from what I experienced, that you not want to stop uh, reading the Quran or reciting the Quran until you reach the end of the topic. And it will encourage you to read more and more. And understanding uh, Quranic language here is just because uh, through this course, you'll be able to understand uh, how the grammar and uh, Morphology works, and inshallah, that will be a, a stepping stone for you to start uh, mastering the Arabic language in general. Right? 
Now, before we continue, let's uh, be clear the terms that we're going to use in this course. Uh, we have uh, what we call because vowels or hangakat. This is what gives the sound to the Arabic letters, uh, mainly a, i, u, or an, in, un. Uh, we have the fatha. We have the fatha gives the a sound. Uh, fatha tiny gives the an sound. That's it. Kitaba, kitaban. Kasra gives the e sound. Kitabi and kasra tiny kitabin. And the Dhamma, they give you the U sound, uh, Kitabu, and Dhamma Tani give you the Kitabu. So these are the terms they're going to use to mention about the, to, uh, to explain the vowels in the system, right? Now, how an Arabic word is formed, okay? More than 90% of Arabic words are based on three letters. Eh? They have, they have uh, 27 or 20 letters in the Arabic alphabet, and a combination and permutation of the three letters give you all sorts of possible words. Uh, with the example, the, the most common word that appears in the Quran, perhaps, we have the non sok ra here. non sok ra we have a da ra ba da ra ba But the three letters here, do not be able to sound it unless you have vowels. And that's what vowels will do, the, whether it's a, it's a dhamma, whether it's a fata or kastra, that gives us the, the a, e, and u sound. So, that's uh, more than 90 percent of the words are based on these three letters there will be the four or five letter words uh that that's as, as a special treatment that will be explained later right now when you see how arabic words are formed they are based normally on two letters here we have another example we have far in lam far in lam is the most common word that you hear when you learn arabic uh far in lam with a fatha on top of each letter. So the sound will be fa'ala. Fa'ala, that is the pattern that usually would mean uh, it's a verb, it's a perfect, perfect tense, which means uh, he did. He did, okay? So fa'ain lam, if you follow it up with a uh, dot raba and give it uh, a fata on top of each letter, on top, on top of dot and ra and ba, it will become dot raba, meaning if this fa'ala means he did, don roba means he struck. Both are perfect tense. Not perfect tense, okay? Right. Another example will be, uh, will be, uh, okay, will be fa'ain lam again, but with an additional letter, which is fa, you add an alif, you have add an alif, ain lam, fa ilun, and change the vowels to fa ilun. Okay, here we have fa ilun. And you separate the letters and you use non short raw. Again, you follow the pattern. You add an alif between nun and short with the first and second letter, you have na sirun. This would be called another, this one is such of a morphology, but additional letter, it gives a specific meaning. Uh, to the original uh, meaning of the letter he did. But Fa'ilun becomes a doer. It will be a male doer. Nasirun, a helper, a male. Male helper. It was called an active uh, active noun. Fa'ilun, Nasirun. A doer, a helper. Right? Now, when we are learning the Arabic grammar or chronic grammar you must understand there are, there are six word forms that you need to recognize there are six words word forms that you need to it follows the pattern we're going to show you uh in detail how these words are uh, formed and what do, what they mean uh, let's take an example for dot roba dot roba we have uh dot roba we have what you call the first one here you have three verbs Dot don roba yat ribu and itrin and you have three nouns don ribon mat ribon and don bun. Okay, for the verb you have three normal like in English you have the fast tense or in Arabic you call it perfect tense. Uh, the, the, the this is don roba mean he struck. Okay, and and yat ribu is the the imperfect tense, the film modare, which got, the meaning was he strikes, and you have idrib, a command verb, uh, you strike, right? 
And for the noun, the actual noun, you have the active noun, da ribbon, a striker, da ribbon, a striker, and you have mock group, again with additional mean and wow. The basic letters are there, dot roba. Okay, you have dot roba, and uh, you have mock group, yeah, mock group, you have the da roba. And you have meme and wow, which means uh, active participle, active noun. Me one being struck and dog bond, uh, a normal noun, uh, a strike. Okay, so they, they follow these patterns. Most of the words follow these patterns. And you have the three forms of verb and three forms of nouns that we need to recognize when uh, we start to uh, learn the grammar. Now, again, let's compare. Uh, English and Arabic. As you can see here on the right side, English there are seven or eight parts of speech. We have the noun, the pronoun, proper noun, adjectives and adverbs here. Yeah? Okay, in English we have the verb and you have the connecting words, which are the prepositions and conjunctions. But in Arabic we have only three parts of speech. We have the isim, which is equivalent to the noun. Okay, you have isim equivalent to the noun. Isim is equivalent to the noun, and is uh, mean. And you have the fi'il, the verb. The verb is uh, uh, same goes. You have the past tense, present tense, and the command verb. Okay, and you have the haraf. Haraf are the connecting words. So. Just look at it with only, you need only to understand and handle three parts of speech as compared to seven or eight parts of speech in English. So Arabic is much simpler to handle. Inshallah, we'll show you that. Okay? Right. Now, let's again compare English and Arabic. Uh, okay, let's look at the sentence here. I gave him this book, he thanked me. I gave him his book, he thanked me. So you can look at here the word him, his, and he. Uh, it refers to the same entity, he, a third person male. But uh, by virtue of his position, where it's an object in this case, I give him, right? And his book, possessive, and he thanked me, the subject, the word changed its spelling. Yeah? But it all still refers to the same entity. Mm -hmm. And uh, in English, the things distinctly occurs for proper nouns like him, his, him, his, and he, like she and her, or hers, and us and we. Okay, that's all. But for Arabic, almost all nouns, in fact, generally speaking, all nouns will experience changes in the way they are spelled. Not the way they are spelled, the way they sound. Meaning the last syllable will change, whether it becomes an A, E, or U. Uh, like it's an object with an A sound, eh? it will be Kitaba. And his book will have an E sound, uh, Kitabi. And he here will be the subjective, which is called the nominative. You have uh, the U sound, uh, Kitabu. Just like an uh, example on top here. Yeah? You can say, Ilkala Yusufu. Eh? When Yusuf said, uh, so Yusuf will be the subject, he said, Yusuf said, so Yusuf is the Dhamma here, will be what they call a marfo. Um, and Abi here will be an object of lead, it will be a, it will be a, uh, ja, a genitive sound. And you can look at again, uh, Ahada Ashara will be the Asam, will be an object position. And same goes with Kaukaban. Uh, Fatha, Ashamsa, Walkomara, okay, uh, stars, the sun, and the moon. These are what they call and uh, being an object. They have the Fatha sound, A sound, and like Sajidin, where we have the E sound, this is what they call the genitive sound. So that's very good to learn how the words are changed and how they are actually represented in the Quran. So you'll be able to understand how the words are related to each other. So knowing that, you'll be able to understand each sentence in the Quran, uh, word per word, and give you more meaning, inshallah. Right? Now, what is it? Let's learn what is it. This is 
I use the term isim and noun to interchangeably, even though it doesn't fully mean that. Okay, let's let's take it as noun is equal to isim here. Now we have a uh, what is noun? Nouns are words other than verbs and nouns. So in the Quran, when you can recognize the verbs and the preposition conjunctions other than those two form of words, you will be isim. And isim normally starts with a a uh, word that have end with a time in and it will the default would be the dhamma time so be dhan ribbon a striker dhan ribbon then this would be an indefinite uh, a striker then you want to make it definite yet you, you add an alif lam before it alif lam plus dhan ribbon you become the striker make it definite and uh by having alif lam at the front the time win at the back here will will, will be Will will lose. You will lose the tanwin and become just one uh, dharma. There will be a dharibu. Okay, so dharibu a striker, a dharibu a uh, the striker. Okay, right. Again, another example uh, will be Muslim. A Muslim, we have the root word be sim lam mim salam. And Muslim, it will be another form of active uh, noun. Muslimon, okay, you have a tanwin there. Yeah? Domotani here. A domotani will be a Muslim. Then you have an, you add an alif lam, because al Muslimo, it loses its tanwin. I mean the Muslim, and it becomes plural, you add waw nun, an alif waw nun, al Muslimona, that gives you the meaning uh, Muslims. Okay? So we shall stop here, inshallah, we'll continue uh, in the next topic. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.